Hey friends, welcome back to my vlog. If you're new here, I'm Angela D, and I'm vlogging about anything and everything, but most especially living life as a single millennial in Los Angeles and my journey to becoming a single foster mom. So today I'm gonna do a video that I actually was very passionate about doing from the very beginning. I'm gonna do a video about things you should not say or questions you should not ask to a single foster parent or foster parents in general. Some of these are gonna be specific to single foster parents, but there are some overarching ones that apply to all foster parents. So if you know someone in foster care, it's a good idea to watch this video and then not ask them the things that I'm going to say or say the things that I'm going to advise against, um, just for the sake of their sanity and your friendship. First and foremost, the biggest response I got from the group of foster parents that I queried was when people ask, are you gonna keep this one? As if it's a puppy, when really it's a child. So questions like, are you gonna adopt this one? Are you gonna keep this one? Are not questions that most foster parents wanna hear. And it's because the answer will always be, I don't know. And that question isn't asked in a mean way or in a vindictive way. It's just curiosity and foster parents know that it is just curiosity. But the answer is always gonna be, I don't know, because it entirely depends on how the case works out, the judge that's involved in the case, whether the parents follow and complete their plan to get their children reunified with them. It's so much, so much is up in the air when it comes to reunification or adoption that asking just doesn't help. You can always assume that the person you know that is a foster parent will volunteer that information when they are ready to give it. It kind of is hurtful too, because it could be that the foster parent really does want to adopt that child, but they really don't know if it's going to be a possibility. And having people constantly remind them that their fate is so undecided is kind of hurtful. So try not to ask that one. The second phrase that I've gotten that most single foster parents don't want to hear is, is this practice for when you have children of your own? I wish that I could tell you that that was a lie, but when I pulled this group, that popped up multiple times. Multiple times have people in their circle ask them, is this practice for when you have real children or your real kids? To a foster parent that is in the system with their entire heart and soul and is in it for the benefit of the child, that question is hurtful because that child is a real child. That child may not be a biological child of the foster parent, but when they're in their home and when they're gonna care for them, they're gonna love them with their entire heart and soul and treat them as if they're their biological kids. So negating the fact that that bond is real by asking about biological children in a real sense is very hurtful. So don't do that. Number three is one that I've already gotten in my journey and one that almost every foster parent hears, and that is, I could not be a foster parent, I would get too attached. That is true. You would probably get too attached, just like every foster parent gets too attached. The point of fostering children who are in need is to get attached. There is a disorder called reactive attachment disorder that affects infants and young children when they are abused emotionally or when they don't have a loving caregiver to cuddle and snuggle and feed them and make them feel safe, they develop reactive attachment disorder, which leads them to the inability to connect and attach lovingly and emotionally, emotionally to other people. And that is incredibly difficult to correct if it can be corrected at all. So you wanna get to, as attached to these children as possible. They need to feel love. They need to feel like when they're with you that, you are, that they're in a safe place. Attachment is key and crucial. It's not that you would get too attached, it's that you don't wanna get attached. So maybe when you're talking to a foster parent, instead of saying, I would get too attached, you can say, I don't want to get attached and then have to say goodbye because foster parents do get attached. So that's the point. You're supposed to get attached. So keep that in mind. Instead of saying, I would get too attached, you're going to say, I don't want to get attached. The next one on my list that applies to single people, um, but not necessarily to all other foster parents is the phrase, if you do this, you won't be able to meet a husband, wife, girlfriend, etc., etc. You won't be able to meet a romantic partner if you're a foster parent. Okay, I got that one six years ago. I've gotten it recently too. And my, my knee-jerk reaction is to say, I don't care. But what I really think after sitting on it is that 
I would like a partner. It would be great if I had a partner. I don't feel like my life will be incomplete if I don't have a partner. I feel like my life will be incomplete if I don't have children in one way, shape, or form. So being a foster parent makes my life feel more complete than waiting around for Mr. Right. And I know each single foster parent is gonna have a different reaction to that, and it may be more difficult to date when you're a foster parent. When, when you're a single parent, it's di difficult to date, period. It is more important to me and many other foster parents to foster more than it is to find a romantic partner. Another one people ask um, that applies to both single and coupled foster parents is what did the biological parents do to lose their children? And that is actually a humongous no-no because not only are you asking a question that isn't part of the foster parents business to answer, it's not any of your business either, honestly, because what you're doing is you're asking how and in what way was this child so abused that their parents got their baby taken away by the government? That is an incredibly loaded question. Most foster parents are not gonna tell you because they know that it's not their business to tell. And as that child grows up, can you imagine growing up with that sort of stigma? Like, there's always gonna be that cloud hanging over their head. And a foster child, when they're of age and when they feel like they wanna share their story, should be able to share their story without judgment. And I think that's where I stand when it comes to my foster kids. If I end up adopting one of, one of them and they decide to share their story, that's totally fine with me. It's not my place to share their story. It's not any foster parent's place to share their story. So stop asking, because they get that one a lot. Another one that a lot of people in the group uh, responded with is one that I have also gotten so far. And it is meant as an extreme compliment to you as a foster parent. And so I, there's no animosity or any anger when it comes to this one, but a lot of people get, a lot of foster parents get things very lovingly from friends and family that say that you are safe for doing it and those kids are lucky to be with you. So I haven't gotten the first half of that question yet, so I really didn't know how to respond. So I asked people in the group and they said, what you should respond is that you are not a saint, you are not amazing, you are a normal person who wants to make a difference. Because that makes it seem, if you are saying that you are a saint and that you are something special, the people who are complimenting you aren't realizing that we are just normal everyday people and they're discouraged from being foster parents because they don't think that they have the moral fortitude to be a, like, a perfect specimen of a human being. So encouraging people to realize that it doesn't take a saint to be a foster parent. It takes somebody who wants to make a difference and who realizes there's a huge problem with the system and they are a good hearted person and can be in the system. That is what a foster parent wants you to think of them. And the second one, those kids are lucky to have you or those kids are lucky to be with you, is meant with the utmost respect and generosity from the people who say it. But when you really step back and think about why the kids are with foster parents, think about the fact that they have they have been abused, abused and that there is trauma. Saying that the kids are lucky, um, it kind of it, it rubs a lot of foster parents the wrong way um, because they're not lucky lucky to be separated from the world that they know all of their friends and all of their family it's incredibly unlucky and yes it is lucky that they are with a loving caring adult human being as, as a result of being removed from their family but in the end they're not they're not lucky it's the foster parent that's lucky because that child's gonna come into their life and change their life and gonna make them a, a better person all around There are many, many more that I need to go over with you guys. This is just part one, but I will end with the kicker and the one that upsets me the most. That is several single mom um, foster moms have been told by various people in their lives that being a foster mom does not make them a real mom. There is nobody in my life that would say that to me. So I am incredibly saddened for people that do have people in their lives that would say that to them. Because having a baby does not make you a mother. It doesn't. Just like having a baby does not make you a father. It's you stepping up for that child, being there for that child, raising that child, loving them as your own. You are a real mother if you are a foster mom. And I am sure there are going to be some single foster moms that are watching this video. And if you have heard that from someone, you immediately cut that person out of your life. That is nonsense. Don't believe it. You are a real mom. 
even if you are a foster mom, you are a real mom. If you birthed your kid, you're a real mom. If you adopted your kid, you're a real mom. If your kids are really your grand, your grandkids or your nieces or your nephews or whatever, you are their mom if you accept the mantle of responsibility for caring them and loving them and treating them with kindness and bringing them up to be good people. You are a real mom. All right, that's gonna do it for this round of things you should not say to a single or a coupled foster parent. As always, I appreciate subscribers to this channel. Please click below to subscribe. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Angela D Vlogs. And I will see you in the next video.